everyone, I'm Katrina and today I'm going to be sharing with you all of the books that I acquired during the month of July. I have quite a big book haul to share with you guys today so I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on each book. But the reason why I do have quite so many this month, obviously I did purchase a lot of these, but I did also receive quite a few for review and the publishing house that I work for were actually clearing out some of our shelves and donating some of the books and they said if there's anything that you're interested in feel free to take some and I came across quite a few books that I was interested in and I was like hey free books why not take them home. I did have one unboxing this month for the July fairy loot box that was uploaded earlier today so if you're interested in seeing what book and other goodies I received in the box take a look at the video that I've linked down below. I did also do a couple of book trades this month so I'll start out with those. First of all I have Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This is the Australian ARC edition and as you can tell I've already read it. I will be doing a book review of this one soon but it's kind of a hard book to describe succinctly. We have Laszlo Strange, also known as Strange the Dreamer, who has just always been really fascinated by this lost city called Weep. And he's a librarian and it kind of starts with him embarking on this kind of journey of discovery and it's amazing guys, it is amazing. Adding to my collection of Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, I have the rare UK proof of this one that has the two birds on the cover, as well as the Australian arc for Nevernight. The new paperback edition of Nevernight has just come out, so I decided to get this one because it is absolutely stunning. How beautiful is this? Just, guys, it's so pretty. If you can't tell, I really, really enjoyed Nevernight, and if you haven't picked it up, I would recommend it. Highly recommend it. I love it. I suppose I should tell you what it's kind of about though. It follows a girl called Mia Corvia who when she's younger witnesses her dad being hanged for treason and she decides to seek revenge on the men responsible for her father's death. Fast forward a few years and she joins the Red Church which is kind of like a cult-like school of assassins. It is great. And Jay was also super kind and sent me the UK arc edition of God's Grave, which is the sequel to Nevernight, which I'm very excited about. Already read it. I loved it just as much as Nevernight, and I will be doing full reviews of Nevernight and God's Grave very soon. Just you wait. As I mentioned in my last book haul where I bought all four hardcover editions of the Harry Potter new 20th anniversary house editions, I said I probably would get the paperbacks. Legit. I got them. So each of these books are Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, but in each different house edition there is some extra content. So in the Hufflepuff one, for example, we have an introduction to the house Hufflepuff, as well as some information about making Hufflepuffs proud, and the house founder, the house library, the relic, the house ghost, and there is a map of Hogwarts, which is very, very cool. I also decided to pick up Fireboy and Earthboy by Sammy Shah. I was just browsing in the bookstore, not really going to pick anything up, and then spotted these books, and the people that I was with absolutely raved about these books, so I decided to pick it up. This follows a guy named Wahid, and his best friend is killed in a tragic accident, and he's also able to see these otherworldly creatures called jinns. After a jinn steals his girlfriend's soul, he decides to figure out why, and he manages to get help from the devil himself. I also picked up The Song of the Current by Sarah Tolksa. This is a new one uh, published by Bloomsbury as well, which I heard about through work and I've just been hearing really good things about, so I was very excited about it. The main character, Carolyn, also she goes by Caro. Uh, is that how you say it? Caro? Caro? Not entirely sure. But she decides to take matters into her own hands when her father is arrested for refusing to transport some mysterious cargo. She decides to deliver it in exchange for his release and she ends up finding herself in a web of mysteries and lies and there are river gods and pirates and it just sounds like a fun time. After reading Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, I decided to order myself the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, which is a series that originally I had never planned on reading. I'd heard kind of mixed things about it and I was like, eh, it's not something that I'm just super excited about. So I just didn't really ever pick up the books. But after reading Strange the Dreamer and falling absolutely in love with Lainey Taylor's writing style and just her imagination and world building, I decided to give them a go because why not? So I ended up finding the UK hardcovers. They're a little more tricky to find. I had to go on a books and eBay. Without even realizing, I managed to come across this signed first edition. So it's number 70 of 1,500, which I was not expecting. Very, very cool. So it's obviously in pristine condition. And I just realized it's been blurbed by Patrick Rothfuss as well. So that has me sold. I'm very, very excited. But obviously I also picked up Days of Blood and Starlight and Dreams of Gods and Monsters. These two are a little more battered. They didn't come very well packaged in the post, so actually in transit, I think these got beat up a little bit, which is a bit sad, but 
that's okay, I have these in my hands, I can now read them. Now moving on to some of the ARC copies I have. So I did pick up a couple from work. We have Moonrise by Sarah Crossan. When Sarah Crossan came over to Australia for the Sydney Writers Festival, she talked about this book that is coming out later this year and <laughs> Guys, I'm so excited to pick it up. This follows Joe, who hasn't seen his brother Ed in 10 years, and that is because Ed is on death row. So this is going to really tackle some really tough and I think really heart-wrenching topics. I think I'm going to have to prepare myself to read this one, but also this is written in verse. I'm really, really excited. I haven't picked up a verse novel in a while. Despite the size, it's going to be a relatively fast book to read, I think. I mean, I guess we'll see if I'm like really emotionally damaged by it, then it might take a little bit longer to get through. But so far, I've only heard incredible reviews from the people that have already read this. So I'm really excited to pick this up. I'm hoping to read it in August or September. Also from Bloomsbury, I have When Light Left Us by Leah Thomas. So from what I can tell, this follows Anna, Hank and Milo, who after their father's disappearance, someone called Luz Luz comes into their life. And I think it's an alien. So I think it's about this alien and the impact it has on their lives when it's there and also after it leaves them. So this sounds like a really, really interesting one. I haven't read anything by Leah Thomas before and it sounds quite different to a lot of the alien stories that I've heard of. So very curious to see how this one goes. I also requested a copy of They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Thank you so much Simon and Schuster for sending this my way. I'm very very excited to pick it up. I will be picking it up I think this month as well. It's on my TBR pile and I'm just so excited about it. I've previously read More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera and it's one of my favourite standalone books at the moment. I really really enjoyed it so when I heard that he was coming out with this one I just had to get it. I do also have um, History is All You Left Me, which I'm hoping to pick up soon as well, but probably going to dive into this one first. In this book, there is this thing called the Death Cast, which I believe is like an announcement of when you're going to die, and it tells you on the day that you're going to die that this is your last day. So it follows Matteo and Rufus, who have both been told that they are going to die that day. So it's about them living the last day of their life. I don't think they know each other, but they just want to have someone to spend their end day with. Okay, I'm having the weirdest reaction right now. I am almost crying. My eyes are watering just thinking about this book because I know how sad it's going to be because they're going to both die at the end. Guys, I haven't even read the book. Why am I crying? Have you ever cried about a book you haven't read before? <laughs> Oh my god, what is happening? If I don't cry like a baby in this book, there's something wrong with me. <sighs> All right, don't even ask what's going on in my brain right now. I obviously have no idea. It's something's not right. Okay, moving on. I did receive a few books unsolicited by Penguin as well. The first is The Mortal Coil by Emily Suvada. How stunning is this ARC edition? It's so cool. I have no idea what it's about as well, but when I first flicked open this, I thought it was addressed to me because the name is Katarina with a C, and it's like relatively similar to my name. Just switch the A to an O and move it a couple of spaces and it would spell my name. So I think this is kind of like an action adventure type thing, potentially sci-fi. So this little bit here, kind of a letter to a character named Katarina by Lachlan and he's basically telling her that if she's reading this he is dead and he has completed this thing called the Hydra vaccine and he's encrypted it in such a way that only she will be able to decrypt it. When she has unlocked the vaccine she needs to release it freely to all survivors. So there must be some kind of sickness or disease going around um, and some ruling entity must want to keep a vaccine under lock and key. They also sent me The Build Up Season by Megan Jacobson. She's the author of Yellow and she's an Australian author as well, so very excited to see another book by her. The main character, Iliad Piper, lives in a not a very healthy household. Her father is quite violent and I think she's kind of built up a lot of walls, kind of an armour around her, until she meets a guy named Jared, who is just as complicated as she is. Sounds like it might be a kind of intense contemporary with some really hard-hitting topics, so yeah, really interested to see what I think of this. And they also sent me a semi-definitive list of worst nightmares by Crystal Sutherland. Esther's family has been cursed to live one great fear in their lifetime. And this is like the kind of fear that is so debilitating and severe that it will lead them to their graves. So in her family, her father is an agoraphobe. He hasn't left the basement in six years. Her brother is afraid of the dark and her mother is afraid of bad luck. And so far, Esther seems to have avoided the curse until I think she meets a boy and discovers that her fear is love which sounds very fascinating, really interesting concept. And now moving on to the last lot of books. These are the ones that I picked up from work that they were clearing out. I picked up a copy of Arthur and Sherlock by Michael Sims. So this is a non-fiction novel that's kind of talking about 
Arthur Conan Doyle and the actual creation of Sherlock Holmes, the kind of the story behind the stories. A Thousand Paper Birds by Tor Udall, and this one is actually not quite out yet, so very lucky to have a hardcover of this one already. So this follows four different characters who I believe are strangers but find their lives linked by a woman named Audrey. So we have Jonah, who is shattered by the death of his wife, which is Audrey. There's Chloe, who finds solace in folding origami. Millie, who is a child who freely roams the Kew Gardens, but where is her mother? And what does she do after the gardens close at night? And also Harry, who I think is probably like the caretaker or the gardener of the Kew Gardens. I don't know, it just sounds like a really interesting one that's going to be quite character driven, so we shall see. Shadowless by Hassan Ali Toptis. This is written by a Turkish author, and I think that is also set in Turkey as well. I'm not really too sure what else this book is about, but from what I can tell, there is a man who disappears from the village without a trace, um, and the community itself begins to fracture, finds himself walking into a barbershop as if from a dream, and he has no idea how he got there. So it's going to have a bit of a mystery going on, and I think it's also going to play into some themes of displacement too. So sounds like a really interesting one. I also have The River at Night by Erica Forencik. This is an ARC copy, and I decided to pick it up because it just looks so cool. This is one that we did publish earlier this year. So it follows Wynne and her three best friends who kind of go on a rafting or camping trip in the main wilderness. The synopsis on this doesn't actually reveal much more, but I do think they come across something quite unexpected, potentially dangerous. Not too sure. I will find out. I also picked up an arc of The Terranauts by T.C. Boyle, which was published last year. And the main reason why I picked this one up is because I've heard a few of my friends read this recently, so I just recognised the title and decided to pick it up. This is inspired by the real events of the 1990s Biosphere 2 project. So it's pretty much these eight people who are under this glass dome for two years. There's no way in, no way out. The Gun Room by Georgina Harding. I think that this one's set in World War II, I'm not entirely sure, but it's about a photographer who takes a photograph in a Vietnamese village and it's a photo of a soldier which I think becomes like a really really famous photograph and kind of propels his career. But the things that he does see in that village is kind of more than he could bear. So he flees to Japan, perhaps to try and forget a lot of what he's seen, but history just kind of catches up to him and he can't really ignore a lot of what happened. I also just remembered that I do have a subscription box as well. Page Habit is a new subscription service. I think it's by the same people that made the quarterly literary box. So in order to celebrate they were doing like a massive competition with a bunch of giveaways and things like that and I managed to get one of the boxes which is very exciting so I thought I would open it up and show you what there is inside. I think the really exciting thing about the Page Habit is there's a bunch of different types of boxes you can get based on different genres. For every box that you purchase with Page Habit they actually make a donation to help support children's literacy which is very exciting. So it does come with this card here that kind of tells you a little bit about Page Habit as well as a snapshot of Zambia kind of talking about the literacy rate, the population, obviously a lot of statistics that are really just heartbreaking but it does come with one book and a couple of other little goodies in here as well. So just thought I'd quickly show you what we have in here. First of all we have this really cute bookish pin that says read more on the cover, some little sticky notes, this little zipper pouch which says so many books so little time Frank Zappa. How accurate is that quote? It also has a page habit bookmark with a quote on it that says, never put off till tomorrow the book you can read today, Holbrook Jackson. It also has a letter from the authors of this month's book, which is The Witch Who Came In From The Cold by Lindsay Smith and Max Gladstone. Now, if you're familiar with literary box, you will know that the main books that are actually included in the box, it comes with annotated notes by the authors, which is very cool. So as you're reading, you can kind of get these little snippets from the author, telling you some just interesting facts perhaps about the writing or the story, which I think is really cool. It's a very interesting way to kind of enhance the reading experience of that book. I've actually never heard of this book before. It is a chunky one as well, so let's see what it's about. Okay, it's set in Prague in 1970, which has me very interested. And I think there's quite a few wars, some with guns, some with words, and some with magic. But we have a CIA officer whose mission is to transport a defector back to the US. But while he's on a job in Egypt, he stumbles across a Soviet cell meeting. And it says here, but Soviet cells don't have altars or sacrificial knives, which sounds very ominous. And ever since he's had splitting headaches, this sounds really interesting, perhaps a bit of a mashup between kind of like historical fiction with in the midst of wars um, with magic thrown in there. And we have reached the end of this book haul video. <sighs> I'm gonna take a nap now. That was intense. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this super super long video, but that is all that I have for this book haul. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time with a new video. But until then, I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye!